caught up in the seedy underworld of hidden vampire clubs and mixed up with the Russian mob, Susan Walsh went missing. Warning, the following content may be considered disturbing or unsettling to certain viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This video is meant for informative purposes only. Hundreds of thousands of people are reported missing every year. This is just one of them. Susan Walsh was born February 18th, 1960, and was 36 years old when she went missing from Nutley, New Jersey. Susan was a recovering alcoholic with 11 years of sobriety under her belt. And unfortunately, according to her family and friends around the time that she went missing, she did start using drugs again and drinking heavily. She used prescription pills like Xanax. When Susan went missing, she was a freelance journalist and was actually enrolled in the master's program at New York University. In 1980s, while attending a different college, she began using drugs and drinking heavily. And she did, however, manage to get herself clean and sober by the time she graduated in 1984. And Susan really wanted to be a poet. Throughout her career, she did strip to help pay for school. In 1986, she stopped stripping and started her writing career. By the time she got married, she had been clean and sober for 11 years. Her friend Melissa Hines said Susan loved her son very much, and she was always there for her son. The two things that mattered the most to her were her son and her career as a journalist. Eventually, though, Susan and her husband actually separated, and the writing jobs she had weren't bringing in enough money to pay for all of her bills. So she went back to stripping because of the cash flow. Things started to turn around again for Susan though, and she landed on an internship at New York's alternate newspaper, The Village Voice. Her assignment was to do research about the sex industry because of her background in stripping. And it wasn't long before her story gained some attention and it gained a lot of heat. Russian mobsters in New York and New Jersey were supposedly forcing women to work like slaves in strip clubs. Susan was described as a fantastic researcher and she really threw herself into finding things out and digging deep into all of these little stories that she was given. She didn't say little, big stories. She was really somebody that threw all of herself into her research. Eventually, the managers at the strip club started to side with the workers against the Russian manager. And Susan loved it, and she put herself right in the middle of it. Susan was heavily praised because of her article about the clubs, and she also received a lot of hate and a lot of threats because of it. That didn't stop her though, and she decided to take on another potentially dangerous story to cover. In the early 1990s, Random and weird vampire clubs began popping up in New York City in the Greenwich Village area, particularly. The club actually had a lot of wealthy people mixed up in it, so they had a lot of connections in order to keep things quiet. And a lot of them claimed to have been actual vampires and as so far as go about drinking blood. And I remember when I was a little girl, Unsolved Mysteries actually covered Susan's case. And I remember it scared me because they talked about vampires and the reenactment was really really scary and it's on YouTube and I think they show Unsolved Mysteries on Hulu so I'm sure it's it's on there. It really scared me when I was a little girl. It still scares me and I'm, I'm 31. Susan started doing more and more research and even dated a man who claimed to be a vampire and part of the undead if you will. <laughs> Even after all the effort she put into it, her article didn't get put into the paper because she said she was said to have believed in it too much. Understandably so, Susan was very upset about this and she was really unhappy. In June 1996, a month before she vanished, her career was again on fire. So Susan had been doing a lot of research for the book Red Light, Inside the Sex Industry by James Ridgway and Sylvia Plackey. There was a publisher's party one night and James noticed that her wrists were covered in bandages. And James learned that Susan cut herself and she was taking tranquilizers and started drinking again. However, Susan just brushed it off and told James that she thought she, if she needed help, she would go get it. Susan was back to dancing at this point 
and a documentary was made a long time ago and a friend named Jill Morley helped with it and she said that um, the, the dancing was so taxing on Susan and the toll it had taken on Susan's life was a lot. She had even mentioned how Susan had difficulty holding on to her life. So just holding on to reality, so to speak. Susan told Jill that she had an ulcer as well as bronchitis and emphysema and that she had actually gone to the hospital twice that week. She had also said she was depressed and had mood swings. Two days after she saw her for the last time, Susan disappeared. There are a lot of theories surrounding Susan's disappearance. Originally, it was believed that Susan succumbed to her depression and poor health. However, the police realized that if that were the case, then they would have been able to find her body by now. And maybe also she would be in the hospital. Maybe they would be able to find her if they called around looking for her. Susan's family and friends believe that because of her being gone for so long, that she's dead. They said that there's no way how much Susan loved her son that she would have just abandoned him in that way. She wouldn't have just left her son. James Wood Ridgeway, the person at the publisher's party that night, thinks that she overdosed and somebody found her body and got rid of it. The cops think that for some odd reason, Susan chose to disappear. The detectives have spoken to many people over the years regarding Susan's case, and a lot of them have claimed to see Susan at some point. Melissa Hines was someone that said that a month after going missing, she saw Susan standing next to a black car. She called for Susan, and when she did, the men and Susan that she was with got into the car and just drove off. They were able to track down the car, though, and the license plate, and the owner, or the driver, said he might have been with Susan at the time, but he couldn't be sure. Melissa thinks that if Susan is still alive, She's in hiding because she's afraid for her life due to her stories with the Vampire Club and maybe the Russian mob. And she thinks that she was in danger. Before she disappeared, Susan and Melissa were apparently followed many times. So that would kind of go well with Melissa's theory that Susan is hiding out because she's afraid for her life. What's really interesting to me is that Susan had a calendar on her wall the month of July, the month that Susan went missing, it was ripped off. It was ripped off the wall and it was gone. It had been, it's been over 25 years since Susan disappeared and no one knows what happened to her. There have been so many theories and possibilities on what could have happened to Susan. People have said maybe the Russian mob because of the story that she wrote, uh, breaking up the underground sex ring, human trafficking, just call it what it is, human trafficking and maybe the vampire cults. And there are people that believe it was an overdose and the police think that she left on her own. Her family does not think that she would have left on her own. Once again, due to the fact that she loved her son so much and she left her personal belongings. She left her purse, her money, her ID, everything that you would take with you if you were going to leave, she left it. And then there are a list of suspects. When Unsolved Mysteries covered her case, it wasn't mentioned that Mark, Susan's ex-husband, was a suspect, if you ask certain people. The police, however, have not named him an official suspect. It's very interesting that even though Mark refused to have the investigators assigned to Susan's case do a forensic test on their apartment, he's not considered a suspect. And I guess if you think about it, maybe like her hair DNA is going to come up if they were living together. It's going to be everywhere in their house. So that would be kind of hard and it wouldn't necessarily make him guilty if they found anything. Marcus May claims that on the day she disappeared, she said she was going to a payphone less than a block away from their apartment. When the police looked into it though, they couldn't find a log or a second of any outgoing calls being made from that particularly that particular payphone near the apartment that morning. Susan had two ex-boyfriends, and one said that the other, a man named Billy Walker, was stalking her. And I'm very unsure if he's considered a suspect or not in Susan's case. All I could find were, were their names. Susan's story was first covered on Unsolved Mysteries on January 31st, 1997, so about seven months after she went missing. There is also a Disappeared episode about Susan, and a lot of those episodes... Um, 
I think you can find them on demand. I'm not sure if you can find them maybe on Hulu. Her case is considered unsolved technically. In 2006, however, the investigators assigned to her case said that they think Susan was in fact murdered. So they went from thinking that she just up and left on her own to thinking that Susan is unfortunately dead. They said that they don't think that she would be gone for so long without trying to make contact with her family. They don't think that she would have gone so many years without trying to get a hold of someone at some point, especially her son, David, without anything. If you have information regarding Susan's disappearance, please reach out to the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department at 973-284-4940. Please also call the New York City Police Department at the Crime Stoppers number, which is 800-577-TIPS, so TIPS. There's also a missing persons case status number that you can call, uh, 212-694-7781. I'll also put those numbers down in the description box below. Um, Susan Walsh was 110 pounds and five foot six inches tall when she went missing. If you have any information, please, once again, feel free to call the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department um, or the New York City numbers that I am going to list in the description box. And please remember that at the end of the day, we are all somebody's someone. Thank you for watching.